Hi everybody, it's Mystic and welcome to my library. You may notice that I am in a different location now for my booktube channel. I've actually moved my office down to my basement because I have all of these awesome built-in shelves here. Uh, you may see that they're actually not completely full yet. Um, I've mentioned in previous um, booktube videos that I actually used to use my Kindle uh, e-reader for a lot of books. So I don't actually own a lot of physical copies of books yet, but I'm working on it. Give me a couple of hauls and I should have some of these filled. But anyway, today's episode is going to be my November wrap up. And I actually ended up reading, um, what was it? One extra book, one extra book. So I made up for the fact that I didn't actually read as many last month because I think I only read like three or four because I was kind of in a book slump. Uh, but now I've got, I've got an extra book. So I have some extra stuff to talk about. So without further ado, let's get into the books. The first book that I read this month was The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And I actually really liked this. This was a really, really good book. Um, it's about a circus that only travels at night and you kind of follow two illusionists through their lives. Um, they're kind of in a competition and they don't know it yet. Uh, and I just, oh my gosh, this book was, this book was good. I wasn't actually sure what I was going to think about it because I had heard some pretty mixed reviews on uh, booktube. I know some people love it. I know some people not so much, but I did. I actually gave it five out of five stars on Goodreads and I think it was actually probably, or it will probably be one of my favorite books of the year, which I'm probably going to talk about in another video. Um, but yeah, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but I, I really loved this. The writing was beautiful. Um, and just, I don't know, the imagery of this book was amazing. Like I felt like I was actually there. She talked about the smells and, and the sights and everything. It just, it just was so good. And it felt like I was actually at the night circus and I loved it. I would love to go to a place like this. I thought it, I thought it was great. The next book that I read, um, continues actually with my Harry Potter read through or my, well, my reread through cause I've read it before. But, uh, the next one is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by JK Rowling. And this one is my favorite Harry Potter book. I don't think that I'm ever going to dethrone this one as my favorite. I just, oh my God, I love it so much. Um, I think what it is, is it gives you a little bit more insight into Voldemort and you don't, you know, he's always just kind of been like this big scary guy that nobody talks about in the previous books. But this one, like you actually get to see memories and you get to see things that happened to him as a child and why he turned out to be, you know, like he is. So this book was great. I loved that it covered a little bit more on um, Snape and it went a little bit more into Draco and I just, uh I can't, I can't say enough about this one. This is my favorite, even though it, it does kill off one of my favorite characters. Um, I, I can't, I can't say anything bad about this book. I love it. And it's probably always going to be my Harry, my favorite Harry Potter book. Always. The next book that I read in November is actually the start of a new series for me. And that is The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. Uh, this is part of the Raven Cycle series. And there are four books believe there's four in this series. Um, I really like this. I gave it a four out of five on Goodreads. It wasn't, you know, my favorite that I've read this year, but I liked it. Um, my only issue is that I felt like it started off a little slow for me. It didn't really pick up until like the middle of the book. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of Blue. Maybe that's going to change later, but I just kind of felt like she was a little bit lacking as a main character. I liked the boys. Um, I really did like them. Uh, I did think that a couple of things in the story were a little bit predictable, but um, all in all, this was a good solid read and I am definitely uh, excited to pick up the Dream Thieves, which I have already ordered on Book Outlet or maybe it was Thrift Books. It was one of those. I don't remember which one. Um, so I will be uh, probably reading that if not in December, then in January for sure. The next book that I read this month, I actually don't have the physical copy of anymore because I lent it to my in-laws. Uh, but that is Uncorking a Lie by Nadine Netman. Now here we go about this one. Um, this is actually a two part series. The very first one was Decanting a Murder, which I read earlier in the year. And I actually really liked it. I think I gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads. Um, it was a pretty solid book. And I, you know, maybe I was giving her the benefit of the doubt because it was her very first book. So I was maybe being a little bit more lenient on some things. Um, 
but uncorking a lie, I I didn't like it. I'm I'm not gonna lie. the The whole premise of this book is you are following a uh, sommelier, which is basically a person who is an expert on wine. When you go to a restaurant, they give you recommendations and how things taste and all that kind of stuff. Um, you're following a sommelier named Katie, and she gets involved in a murder mystery, and she uses her deductive reasoning skills that she picks up as a sommelier to solve the mysteries. The first one, I thought this was a good premise. The every single chapter gave you a wine pairing, which I thought was really cool. If you guys know me, you know I really <laughs> like wine. So I thought that this was awesome. And like, I, again, the first book I thought was pretty good. This one... Oh, I don't know what it was. I ended up giving it two out of five stars, but really it was like a 1.5. I only give one out of five stars to books that I t that I DNF, that I just don't want to finish reading. I did finish this only because it's so short. It's only like 230 pages or something like that. And yeah, it was a short read. It was still quick, but like the story was just not as good this time. Katie, I found to be just so good dumb so many things in this book i wanted her i wanted to shake her and be like what are you doing what's wrong with you <sighs> basically oh corking a lie was just not as good as decanting a murder there were a lot of things that i had issues with the story wasn't that good it felt like it was just very contrived and she the author was just you know running things to just kind of keep things going but at the same time you could tell that that's what she was doing because it wasn't very good so yeah that one, that one was probably one of the lowest rated books that I've given out this year with the exception of Never Let Me Go, uh, which I read, I think in, in June or July. Either way, I didn't like that one either, but for different reasons. I'm not going to get into it right now. And finally, this is the book that was not on my original November TBR because I thought that I was going to be um, wrapping things up around the time that I was finishing Uncorking a Lie, but I actually ended up having um, a lot of time to read more. I ended up, we were traveling for Thanksgiving, so I had a lot of time to read while we were in the car and whatnot, so I ended up having another whole book to read. And that book is none other than Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Okay, so here's something about this book. Um, I actually never really liked this one. When I when I read it last, I probably rated it towards the bottom of all of the Harry Potter books. Now I still gave it five stars because I like Harry Potter enough that most of them I will give five stars to unless I really just can't get through them. The only one I think that is at this point getting uh, less than five stars is Order of the Phoenix, which is 3.5. Um, but this one, used to be lower on the list for me. I didn't actually like it the last time I, I mean, I didn't love it the last time I read it, at least compared to some of the other ones. But this time around, I am changing my whole order of Harry Potter books around for this book and actually for a couple of the other ones. But this one is really the main reason that I'm changing it. It's actually in the number two spot for me right now. This, this time around reading this, I don't know if it's because I'm older and maybe I just appreciate it more, but oh my gosh, <laughs> I loved this one this time around. The story was great. It builds more upon the relationship of Harry and Hermione and Ron, and it talks more about Snape and it talks more about Dumbledore and like the information on Dumbledore's past. I don't know why I didn't like it last time because Dumbledore is one of my favorite characters and like learning more about his past and about Grindelwald and Aberforth and Ariana and all that stuff. It was just, it was so good. It was so good. I, I loved everything about this book this time around and I'm so glad that I read it again. Harry Potter is forever going to be one of my favorite books or my favorite book series. I, I can't, I can't not love this series. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it to my kids. I'm going to, I'm just going to always cherish this series. It's basically what got me into, re back into reading when I was in high school. And um, I just, I love it. And I'm so glad that this one is actually now a favorite of mine. It's actually the only Harry Potter book that I own, that I own in hardcover at the moment, which I'm going to hopefully be changing soon. This one's heavy, actually, but um, Oh, it was so good. I loved everything about it. So that concludes my wrap up for November. I hope you guys enjoyed. What did you guys read in November? Was there anything that you really loved? Was there anything that you really hated? I'm definitely interested to hear more. If you want to see more videos, don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe if you have not. You can also click the bell to know when my videos get published. And don't forget to follow me on Twitch as well. I am also a video game streamer on Twitch. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye!